Hey, it's Dr. T. Let's continue with this discussion of radiographic technique and take a closer look at some panoramic positioning errors. So what are the possible errors that can we that can happen? Well, the chin could be too far up or too far down, and both of these are a result of that Frankfurt plane. Remember, the Frankfurt plane is a plane that goes from the top of the ear canal to the bottom of the eye socket, and we want this roughly parallel with the floor. Patient could be rotated left or right, which is a problem with the mid-sagittal plane. We want the patient to be upright and centered. And most machines have a light that helps you line this up in one way or another, whether the light is, is, is midline or sometimes the light is actually on the, on the canine. So you can make sure if you had a light on either side on the canines, that helps make sure the patient's in the correct position as well. Patient could be too far forward or too far backward, and that's just a problem in the anterior posterior direction tongue not to the palate, or foreign objects seen on a patient, okay? Earrings, um, removable dental devices, hair clips, and such. And both of these are really kind of our, I guess all position ears are our fault, but this is our, our the, the problem is patient instruction, right? We have to tell the patient, put your tongue to the roof of the mouth and leave it there until this compl is completed. We have to recognize that there's potential foreign objects and ask the patient to remove those if possible. Patient could be slumped and that could be instruction. You know, maybe we don't have the machine lined up properly um, up and down, or it could be an, an anatomical problem with the patient. If somebody had a, a um, severe scoliosis in the cervical region, there may not be a way around this, and this can lead to uh, an accentuated spinal shadow. And then finally, movement. And that's not really a positioning error, but it's an error on a film, ultimately, and it's just because the patient moves. Generally, uh, um, you know, we, we could say that maybe that's a problem with patient instruction as well. I want to make sure to tell the patient to, you know, close down, keep your tongue to your roof your mouth, and be very still. Um, are certainly good things to inform a patient right before you take a pan. So what are the two major positioning errors? And, and it's interesting that a lot of times when there are positioning errors, there are more than one, and sometimes there's more than two even, but we have to think about the major one. Now, ones often as to correct. And it's important to recognize these so we can offer correction for the next time we take a film. We don't want to keep creating the same error and same error again and again. So the one that jumps out at me the most on this one, and actually they both jump out pretty pretty strongly though, is this 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 airspace. Okay, and what do we call this? It's the platoglossal airspace. This space between the tongue and the roof of the mouth. The patient doesn't keep their tongue to the roof of the mouth, or doesn't put it there at all. Okay, the other big air here is this accentuated smile line, right? Um, and this does a does a few things and one of them is it can make a situation where the anterior mandibular teeth are now outside the focal trough because the chin is chin is in, in effect kind of too far back when we do this um, here's another film with that accentuated smile line and again you can see it's blurry in the anterior region and there's that palatoglossal layer space like I said a lot of times when we see films there's multiple airs this was a, a different clinician. This isn't even the same clinician, but um, you can see the similar error. And again, if this is the palatoglossal airspace, do you remember what this airspace is? And it shows up pretty well on this film. That is the nasopharyngeal airspace. And the one that's going down the throat is the glossopharyngeal airspace. So please try to keep those in mind. Um, and we sometimes this will be referred to as a jack-o'-lantern look if the if the chin is too far down. Again, we've got this big, super accentuated smile. And the other um, problem that we can see this with this is the condyle can be thrown off the film superiorly. And again, we can get this, this blurring of the anterior mandibular region because it's, it's thrown outside the focal trough. Just, and just another one. Um, you know, you start getting that these all look alike and you can see the patient's chin's just too far down. You just need to Part of the positioning is to position the, the unit such that the chin is just a little higher. And again, it's so important. I mean, we, we, we get air sometimes when we positioning air sometimes, and, and the important thing is to learn from it and not have films that are consistently have with errors. I mean, you have a new staff in your office that you're training, and you get a couple films like this, 
they need to be able to correct it. They need to have the capacity to correct this and not have this cons as a consistent error. Okay, let's look at another one. What is the major positioning error? Well, what jumps out at me is, look at the size of this monster molar. Is it really that big on one side versus the other? No, no. Um, so if we're looking at, at problems with the mid-sagittal plane, left or right, looking at the molar teeth is a great way to look for it, but also to look at the ramus and look at how thick this ramus is compared to the, other, the, the contralateral side. So which way is the patient turned? Okay, because again, if we're going to correct an error, we need to know where the problem is. And this has to do with magnification, right? And the, the machines are set that, that they're calibrated such that the, the teeth should be a certain distance from the film. And if you get too close to the film, we actually get less magnification. So the side that is turned towards the film will um, be smaller. You get more magnification if you're turned away from the film. So the, the side that, that's away from the film will have more magnification. Just like, you know, again, we keep going back to this shadow casting, just like your shadow of your hand, the further away you get from the wall, the larger it will be. And so the side that's further away from the film will be magnified. So we have to decide is, so is this patient turned towards the left or towards the right? Well, since their left side, remember when we look at a film, it's as if we're looking at the patient. So what is on our right is really the patient's left side. The patient is, tor is turned towards his or her left side, okay? Which for us is the right side of the film. And pan pans are often labeled, like you can see on this one, it's got the little L labeled on the left side. So you know which side is left. That just gives you an indication. And if it, that should be, you know, the L should be in normal, you know, normal position if it's upside down you go well i've got the film upside down so i asked what's the major positioning error and then also a second question what's the structure labeled with the um the just um, the mark there the the little arrow and this one's a little more subtle but i would ask you to look at the ramus this side is thicker compared to this side so again the patient is rotated towards the left again so what are the structures labeled with this? Well, that's a complete denture. And it's important to have um, removal de devices um, taken out of the mouth, whether it's a, a complete denture, a, a partial denture, or any orth removable orthodontic appliance. Um, you know, if somebody had a retainer or something, we would want that removed as well. So why does number 19 look so funky? So first you've got to decide where is number 19 and number 19 is right here. Okay. And is it really shaped like this? No, the patient was moving. Okay. So the patient moved such that just, and, and it, there's not, and you can see a little divot on the inferior border of the mandible as part of this movement. They didn't move so far, so much up and down. They really kind of moved so that, that, um, when it was when the um, image of the first molar was being taken, it was actually being taken for longer because they moved a little bit. So, patient movement. Look at this one, kind of crazy. Okay, this was this was more of a um, up and down movement, right? Because all of a sudden the pan's going just fine, and all of a sudden it takes a big dip um, because the patient moved in a in a superior inferior direction. How about this one? What's the major positioning error? And I look at this, um, and I could say maybe the chin is down just a little bit, but I'm more struck by the size of the anterior teeth. They're kind of skinny. And so this is an anterior posterior positioning error. Remember, anterior is anorexic. Posterior is pudgy. Her back is fat, if you want to think about it like that. So if the teeth look too skinny, that means the teeth are positioned too far anteriorly. There is a groove in most panoramic bite blocks. There's a little bite stick that the patient closes on, and there's a groove for the um, maxillary anterior you know, incisors and the mandibular incisors, and they just have to get in that groove. And as long as you have that, that position correctly, um, 
you shouldn't get this air. Now, I remember we got a new machine once and the the bite blocks didn't come in with the machine and we had to wait several weeks for this and we were getting some anterior posterior positioning errors because it was hard to line up the patient appropriately. We had to kind of do a little bit of a um, educated guessing on the correct position, but we were getting quite a bit of these errors simply because we didn't have the bite blocks, but we still needed to take pans. Once the bite blocks came in, that this air stopped. And just another one, you can see how skinny they are in this one. Now, this is kind of a bad pan overall. I just did this one's hard to interpret in general, but look how skinny those incisors look. The other thing that this can, that can happen sometimes is we get way more spine in the film than expected. I mean, this is just kind of crazy how much spine we see. And remember, since with taking panoramic radiography, the, the, the skull is pierced twice. People don't have two spines, but we see a spine on either side of the, of the film because it's like unwrapping the patient. So if you think about it, we unwrap it from kind of mid-spine, and then so we see a little bit of the spine on the right side, and we see a little bit of the spine on the left side. So what is the major positioning error? Now, there is a platoglossal airspace I could have added to this one too, but really what I was looking for in this one was this frown look. Okay, the patient's chin is too far up, and it looks like a frown. You know, the teeth should, should have a gentle curvature up. And if the chin is too far high, it's too too superior, it can throw the condyles off on the sides and we get blurring of the anterior maxillary teeth because it can throw them out of the focal trough. Here's one that's a, a little, even a little more frowny. Um, and again, we see that same blurring of the, of the anterior maxillary teeth and the condyle, we lose the condyles. Remember, when we take images we are responsible for everything on an image so we don't take images to just to look at teeth we have to take images and look at everything that's on here um, we'll talk more later about lots of pathologic things you can see but we need to be able to see the condyles as well to see if there's any pathologic changes to the to the head of the condyle so let's do one more what's the major positioning in error? And this one's a tough one for me because I, I don't know that I would jump out and tell you, be able to tell you what the error, but I know what happened here. So um, this one's a little tougher. And really what I want to point out is this um, accentuated spinal shadow. And this was somebody that was slumped. And you can imagine if you're slumped like this, when you take a pan, there is more spine that's going to go through. Now, if somebody was in this head position, would there be all sorts of other errors too? Okay, but I just this was a good picture of somebody kind of slumped over. Um, you can imagine there'd be more spine to go through, so you're going to see more spine on the film. So, if we go back to what are the possible positioning errors? You know, chin up, chin down. That's that Frankfurt plane. Rotated left or right is the Miss Sagittal plane. Too far forward or backwards we just need to make sure the patient is positioned correctly in the anterior posterior direction um, tongue to the roof of the palate palate and foreign objects are things we just need to make sure we're instructing the patient and, and looking for um, and again try to have the patient upright as much as possible and you know ask the patient not to you know to be still while while this this happens but some people just move whether it's uh, accidental or if they're trying to talk during the during the pan or something um, usually that's that's inadvertent and we don't see a lot of patient movement that's probably one we don't see a lot of so as always if you have any questions comments or concerns please let me know feel free to contact me email phone text um, glad to help anybody out if they need it thank you bye